Welcome everyone, this is David. In this video, I want to give to you a little presentation on the growing persecution against Russians and against Orthodox Christians that is going on both in Russia and in the rest of the world. Uh, we've seen the, the rhetoric being ramped up, especially by normies, the anti-Russian rhetoric being ramped up and its effects on Russian citizens, especially when they realize you know, these days there's, they're also realizing that the Russian citizens actually don't really have that big of a problem with this war. And as a result, uh, there's been, you know, with the, with the sanctions too, that damage both the Russian people and the people of the rest of the world, we also see, again, what is going on with anti-Russian and anti-Orthodox Christian sentiment. Uh, and I want to start this video by this absolutely comical call by Lindsey Graham. This is still not deleted on Twitter, by the way. This is, a, you know, this is, I, I'm not even going to describe what this is. I mean, you can very clearly see what he's doing. I mean, he he said this, and then he said this publicly on Fox News. I mean, this is this guy is insane. We see some applications like this one. This is a popular image where Russians are depicted as aggressive, manipulative, toxic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, which, I mean, this is just straight-up blatant racism. I mean, some classical... But, oh, you know, I guess people are going to say it's not because of some new BS that they came up with, some new definition of what whatever they came up with. But this is just, again, straight-up, you know, a straight-up attack on, on the Russian people and their character. Uh, we've seen some, you know, we've seen Russian contributors to philosophy science etc being banned they're mentioned being banned this was in an italian university now i believe a, a day later this was rescinded but uh, there was a ban on dostoevsky in an italian university but the fact the point that i want to make is that the fact that this ban was applied in the first place is comical in and of itself i mean the fact that this ban was applied it's a joke it's a total joke but it just goes to show you know the and this is just you know we, we're just like less than two weeks into this whole thing. I mean, imagine if this goes on for a month, which I don't I don't think it's gonna go for that long, but I mean imagine what's gonna happen in two, three months with the with the amount of disinformation that's going on. Russians are gonna be treated as second class world citizens at this stage. I mean, um there's there's also been sanctions against Russia, you know, the SWIFT cutoffs, um, the gas embargo, which is really it's really just damaging people in the West um, because the gas prices are now skyrocketing and the commodities prices are also skyrocketing as a result of these sanctions. But what's really interesting, again, it, are these sanctions going to affect the government? No, they probably already planned for this. You know, these things are all these people. These people are the ones that did it, right? The, the billionaires, etc., the elites. So they already knew what they know what they're doing for months prior. So they're already prepared for this. Um, but the people, you know, you, you, you watching this video, you're going to be the one suffering as a result of this. It's not going to be your government. It's not going to be these elites like this disgusting person. You know, when you are suffering as a result of this, when you can barely eat, when you can barely feed yourself because of what is going on, when you can barely drive your car to your work because of this, you know, this total idiot who is a millionaire, by the way, so he doesn't really care about what's going on. Yeah, he's going to tell to you, yeah. Consider their patriotic donation. No, your life is going to suffer so that he can fulfill his power fantasy. These are the kinds of people that have power over you. And the, the amount of people that actually agree with this idiot is just surprising. But, you know, you also look at yourself, you know, are these companies, you know, these companies are supposed to be these beacons of morality. Yeah, yeah. PRN Hub. Yeah, uh, Netflix, only whatever. Yeah, these people, these groups, these organizations are, yeah, they are so moral. Right, they're trying to lecture us on morality. When all they do is export crap, they export demonic nonsense, they export degeneracy, they export all sorts of negative aspects of human life, and we're supposed to be sad about that. No, that's actually a good thing for Russia. But all of these organizations, even if you ignore the the obviously moral ones, you think that they're doing this for a moral stand? No, these are. This is a geopolitical act. This is an economic attack on Russia and an economic attack on you. They're not going to be the ones suffering for it. No, their workers will suffer. The consumer will suffer due to the increase of prices. But the people who made this decision, no, none of them are going to care what's going on. But you're going to be the one that's going to suffer. Think about that for a second. Okay, you are the one suffering. The Ukrainian people are the ones suffering. Russian people are suffering. You are suffering. 
but they don't care. Uh, another thing that I wanted to note is the or is the uh, persecution of Orthodox Christians. This is in New Zealand where a church was vandalized. And this is again just starting. This one is just disgusting. This is in Ukraine where an Orthodox church under uh, the Moscow Patriarchate, which is headed by in Ukraine, headed by Metropolitan Onufri, was looted. Now you might say, oh, it's under Moscow, so it's a it's a Putin puppet church. Whatever, who cares? Well, first of all, it is under Metropolitan Onufri. There, there is this there is this rhetoric about Patriarch Kirill supposedly being the Pope of Russia. That is absolutely not true. There is no such idea in Orthodox Christianity where the Patriarch of Moscow supposedly has like pope-like powers over his jurisdiction. Such an idea does not exist. In Ukraine, Patriarch Kirill does not have power. Metropolitan Onufri has. And guess what? Metropolitan Onufri condemned this war, and he's also helping the Ukrainian citizens by opening their churches. He opened the churches that these, these people are looting right now. These churches are opened for people who are to hide during this war, to seek refuge. And these people are entering and looting the church, screwing over the people who are, you know, holding themselves refuge, by the way, right? But it's even funnier when you think about, you know, Metropolitan Onufri is helping Ukrainian people so much. What is the other Metropolitan? Because as if you didn't know, there's a Epiphany, right, who's supported by, he's backed by Western powers. He's the schismatic, you know, fake bishop. Guess what? Guess where he is? He's in Greece. He's hiding. He ran away from Ukraine and he's hiding in Greece. Whereas the real spiritual leader of Ukraine is still in Ukraine and he's still getting persecuted by Ukraine. That just goes to show you who the real actual good guys in this conflict are, right? It's Metropolitan Onufri is the good person. He is the one being persecuted, but these people are the persecutors. And as and, and again, I want to note is that Metropolitan Onufri now at the moment, they are not comm commemorating Patriarch Kirill anymore because of his stance on this issue, right? They, they're not pleased by his stance on this issue. And so they don't commemorate it. But I thought Metropolitan Onufri was just a, a puppet of Patriarch Kirill, of Russian interests, as Ukraine claimed. You're telling me that the mainstream media lied to me? Yes, they lied to you. And you don't know anything about Orthodox Christianity and its ecclesiology if you make comments like this. Um, again, this is another Orthodox church, this time in Canada, that is being vandalized. I mean, what do they even expect us to do, right? Do you, like, what can, what can these people in Canada even do, right? This is just... Clear vandalism again. You know, we might say, oh, you know, it's just paint, you know, whatever. Why, why, why would you get so mad? Because it can escalate. That's what's worrying about this. And this is going, this is going to continue to people. But uh, that kind of deals with the first part of this video. Now I want to focus on what Patriarch Kirill said because there's clear, again, media disinformation about Patriarch Kirill's statements. There are two statements that they mainly focus on. His statement on the alphabet agency uh, and in re relation to Ukraine and the, the metaphysical struggle against evil and how the Ukraine war relates to it. And you can, I, I will put this in the, in the description, link in the description below, but if you actually read the speech itself, he's not saying things that the, these people are advertising it as right so for example patriarch Kirill does not say anything about how the war is against evil what he's rather saying is that there are some forces that are supposedly pro-ukraine that are evil right and in in the speech he is connecting this with the need to follow divine laws first of all this speech is about forgiveness sunday right so this is in commemoration uh, this is in remembrance, rather, of Adam's exile, which is what Forgiveness Sunday is about. Uh, and this is, and Forgiveness Sunday is when, is how we start Lent, right? Great Lent is the time of ascetic spiritual struggle, prayer, um, fasting, almsgiving, and practice of all of these different Christian virtues as we disconnect ourselves from worldly things, which especially it is overshadowed with the conflict that is going on today. So it is particularly incredibly difficult for both Russia and Ukraine, even Orthodox Christians really anywhere else in the world, right? Um, you know, even for people like me, even for people like, um, you know, again, Western converts in America or in Europe, etc. For them, it's also a difficult situation. But what Patriarch Kirill is, I'm going to kind of try to shorten the speech here, but you can read it for yourself. The first point that he makes is that he's talking about how to, you know, the the things that are exported by some of the groups supporting Ukraine, 
right? So he's talking about NATO, he's talking about the United States, and he's saying, well, in order to be in their club, right, and what these people are promoting in Ukraine, in order to be in their in their club, you have to be pro-alphabet, right? You can guess what I'm referring to here. It, now, first of all, let's look at this in contrast with the fake metropolitan, so-called metropolitan epiphany, who, you know, says, who, again, this guy's backed by Western powers, who is more positive on these people, right? So that comment is surely, you know, really aimed at this person, first of all, primarily, but in terms of exportation of these values, of these damaging values, both to Ukraine and to Russia, and, and these comments, all I'm just going to show you a couple of images. I'm not going to make a comment on this, but uh, just very, very short ones, um, like this one, how the, the White House in 2014 admits to funding alphabet stuff in Africa, for instance, um, uh, the Tbilisi Pride decision, this was, you know, the, 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 the parade that was supposed to be in Georgia, uh, organized by the U.S. Embassy. And speaking of U.S. Embassy, the imperial flag on, in Russia, in the U.S. Embassy. And you can see this imperial flag also in many different countries, right, from the U.S. Embassy as well. Which is, you know, just makes you think, you know, makes you think about these comments. It's almost as if the comments kind of make sense. Right. Or what about the Open Society Foundation, which is funded by a very popular elite that is, I believe, banned from Russian Hungary, you know, and uh, his name is something like Yorgos. I think you, you, you understand who I'm referring to here. Right. You can even, I think, read his name in here. Um, no, I don't think so. But uh, again, alphabet funding in Georgia alphabet funding this is reported by these very people themselves they have georgians have received scholarships from open society foundations to defend what to promote what the very thing patriarchal is saying that you need to accept in order to be in their club we have ford foundation we have open society foundations again admitting to funding these things and funding these things in africa um, and I'm pointing out Africa because it's just such a bizarre place to kind of like, like, you know, oh, you oh, give your money to Africa because people are suffering and they don't have food to eat. But this is what they spend their money for in Africa. Right? Millions of dollars, not for food, but for this kind of stuff. It makes you think, you know, this if is this really part of the ideology that is being exported? Yes. And why don't we take a look at the values what is being exported to these countries? The values. What is it that is being exported, really? Right? It's not freedom. It's not human rights. It's not protecting the people who are being persecuted, whatever. This is what is being promoted. This is what is being promoted. You know, this, uh, the, the red text is what is being defended. James Younger, people like the James Younger who... I'm not even going to tell you the story. I mean, this James Younger story is just incredibly tra tragic. I mean, it's a child and he's being, he's going through this. Okay. This is what is being exported. This is what Patriot Kirill is talking about. And some of these groups who are pro Ukraine, yes, they do support this. It's undeniable, right? The president supports this, right? It was backed by the Western powers. And then the, the comments about metaphysical significance, right? Um, the, it, the, the, the struggle that he is really referring to is a struggle to uphold divine commandments and forgiveness, right? All of the above indicates that we have entered into a struggle. Well, what is the, what is the above, right? Well, let me, let me say you what, what it is. Let me read it. Everything that I say has not just some theoretical meaning and not only a spiritual meaning. Around this topic today, there is a real war. Who is attacking Ukraine today? where the suppression and extermination of people in the Donbass has been going on for eight years. Eight years of suffering and the whole world is silent. What does that mean? But we know that our brothers and sisters are really suffering. Moreover, they may suffer for their loyalty to the church. And so today, on Forgiveness Sunday, on the one hand, as your shepherd, I call on everyone to forgive sins and insults, including where it is very difficult to do this. No one points this out. This is what he's referring to. This is the metaphysical struggle that he's talking about. Part of it, at least, 
where people are at war with each other, but forgiveness without justice is capitulation and weakness. So we must forgive our enemies, but that doesn't mean we let them walk over us. Therefore, forgiveness must be accompanied by the indispensable preservation of the right to stand on the side of the world, on the side of God's truth, on the side of the divine commandments. And all of the above indicates that we have entered into a struggle that is not physical, but a metaphysical significance. I know how, unfortunately, now he's talking about how there are Orthodox Christians that believe that, uh, you know, that they should choose the path of least resistance and that they should just like kind of give a blanket statement about no war, etc. And he says, we do not condemn anyone and we do not invite anyone to come to the cross. We just say to ourselves, right, we don't force these people, but we just say to ourselves, we will be faithful to the word of God. Again, this is from Google Translate, so some of the translations might be a little murky. Someone who's Russian speaking, I mean, if I'm kind of giving an incorrect meaning, can correct me on this in the comments below. But what he is saying is very different from what, in fact, the, the mainstream news media is in making him say, right? It's a very different statement. And his focus is on solidarity with the Russian people in Donbass, who, if you looked at my video on the Ukraine war lies, you know, the, the video I start with, it's Ukraine in 2014, 2015, shelling civilian buildings in Donbass. It's not Russia. It's Ukraine doing these things. They did this eight, uh, for eight years, starting eight years ago. So, but no one, no one talks about this. No one points this out, right? It's never talked about. Um, and this is kind of what I wanted to show. And again, you can kind of read the whole address yourself. Um, that really, most of the address is about the importance of forgiveness, right? And that's what he's saying, that we must forgive our enemies, but stand on the side of justice and truth. And again, such a statement is not wrong, all right? Um, but it is being mischaracterized by, you know, the evil people in the West, I will say. And that's what I wanted to finish my video with. Um, thank you for watching. If you learned something valuable that was, you know, helpful for you to navigate what is going on in the, you know, with, with correct information, right, uh, wrong information, I'm happy for that. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, share this video around, like and comment your thoughts on, you know, what I've been, what I mentioned in this video, and I want to finish this with a uh, Patreon shout out. Thank you for to everyone who has been financially supporting my channel on Patreon. Um, Node, Maximus, Mitch, Jonathan, Stephen, Vlad, Kerry, Ignatius, uh, Mike, Jack, Nectarius, Flood Basement, Dave, Colton, Seraphim, Norbert. Thank you all for your generous and kind gifts uh, to to me and for what I. For, for what I'm trying to do here in my channel. And thank you all for watching this. I will see you all in the next video. May God be with you all. Goodbye.